This is Rock Slapping Champions. Player 1, playing Nova, we have Eva Lane. And player 2, playing Kerrigan, we have someone's name that I cannot pronounce. And now you can actually see their names. So one of the things that you will notice here is that I have modified the observer interface so that it can actually display the Asian characters, so Chinese characters, which I believe this is, and Korean characters as well, and theoretically even Japanese characters should be able to be displayed now on this observer interface. I'll find out if I ever get a, get some replays from uh, from the Asian server. But yeah, let's have a look at the player masteries while the players get set up. We have here Nova, who is a non-mastery commander, so Eveling has chosen to suffer through the Asian server, and they have no masteries right now, and Kerrigan is a level 44 mastery commander. So we have Kerrigan attack damage, the best speed cost, and then a 14, 14 points into the fast evolution mastery here. So we should be expecting a unit-centric build here for Kerrigan, and this game is going to be a little bit difficult because Nova is not at full power, but I actually do not know what level is. I was not really paying attention to the loading screen to see what level Nova was when she joined into this. It was about level 10 or 12, I think. So reasonably high, but do note that Nova does not have all her powers yet. So, Nova has already taken the expansion. Let's build a fast build the command center. So put the command center out. That should allow Nova to be able to build up an army. Over here, Garrigan has built a queen, and this is very, very indicative of a ladder style Zerg play. So one of the things you will notice is when you do have people playing Garrigan, Garrigan is very very similar to a ladder Zerg, so you will usually see queens out and whatnot, and they will be injecting larva to their to their hatcheries. And generally speaking, I just build macro hatcheries, and that's, that's usually what you want to do. So Garrigan we build maybe one macro hatchery here and already start long distance mining while the rest of the units or wait for Kerrigan to come out to clear the rocks. We now have an attack wave over here and Kerrigan is not even looking at the attack wave. You can see the camera over there and now this attack wave is going to attack Nova's barracks. And Kerrigan is just not interested in assisting her ally. Just going to continue looking at this and not her problem. She's completely uninterested. Just going to continue looking at the over there. And now looks at the base, notices that there's an attack wave, and sends the Zerglings to attack these Hellions, and some of these Zerglings are going to end up getting roasted by some of these Hellions, but overall seems to be okay. Let's have a look at the masteries. Uh, sorry, let's have a look at the units lost here. Four Zerglings have been lost as a result of that engage. These Zerglings now will end up clearing out this expansion. And the first harvesting bot is getting ready to head out and farm its Terrazin. And these Zerglings are going to end up clearing out this expansion. Kerrigan, on the other hand, is just going to be chilling at home. Because she likes staying at home with her friendly drones as they watch them mine. Now she's having a look at the cute tumor over there, investigating it, just making sure everything is okay and everything is working as intended. And it is. So now Nova is going to go and start, or Kerrigan is going to go and start defending this harvesting bot over here. And Kerrigan is out now, and that is one shotgun blast by Nova, ending up killing off all those Hellions. And there should be another attack wave that will be spawning sometime soon as well. Nova has a bunch of Marauders here, and those Marauders will be clearing out these rocks. And now there's the other attack wave, and Kerrigan is gonna go over here. Clear out that one last Hellion. Where is Kerrigan looking at? Kerrigan is still looking at her base, just admiring the wonderfulness that is her base. Okay, injecting some larva as well. Not really paying attention to anything else that Nova is doing at the moment. Looking at the expansion. And does a weed rally over there. And so far, seems okay. So Kerrigan wants to do stuff now. Uses, a, uses an assimilation aura to kill off the two marauders. And what is Kerrigan going to do? She's going to try to get more value? No, not interested. Just wants to get the just wants to get the resources out of those out of those two brothers, and that is basically it for Kerrigan. So so far, so good. And we have a Hydralisk den and we have two evolution chambers out for Kerrigan. So Hydralisks, I suppose, would be the play over here. You could even theoretically do lurkers, but you have to be a little bit careful with how you how you play the lurkers here. Just have a bunch of creep tumors that have been put down, but there's no intended creep spread over here. The other thing to also note is Garrigan still does not have any Omega Worms, and Garrigan is still on Lair Tech at the 7 minute mark. 
And generally, for Kerrigan, you want to try and get to Hive Deck as quickly as possible because you get your ability efficiency upgrade. And that ability efficiency upgrade is very important for making Kerrigan useful. We have a bunch of Overseers now that are coming up for Kerrigan. So this is very indicative of a ladder Zerg playstyle. We have the missile attacks upgrades that are coming up for Kerrigan. And no Hydralisk upgrades, unfortunately, though. And Nova seems to be okay as well, just producing some Siege Tank Spire Mine upgrades and getting the attack and the armor upgrades as well. I generally prefer to not go for armor upgrades. I find that they are a little bit wasteful against Amon because armor upgrades only add one armor per upgrade as opposed to attack upgrades, which increase your attack by approximately 10%. So, the first Harass Wave has spawned here, and Nova will end up cleaning up that without too many issues. There are a bunch of Warhounds at the back, though, they are kind of... You can see the amount of damage I'm going to do. Another Assimilation Aura comes out, and Kerrigan is going to go and clear out these Warhounds now. Is Kerrigan going to try and intercept this next attack wave? Nope, moves back. He does not even notice that there are already a bunch of Hellions on the Assimilation Aura. Runs out yet again. Such a valuable ability not being utilized to its maximum potential and now Nova has a bunch of siege tanks and I think these siege tanks have spire mines like that. These spire mines will be able to hold or for a while and now we have the next harass wave over here as well and Kerrigan again with the, with the help of the defensive drone should be reasonably okay and Nova is getting focus fired down by some of the units in the back line but the uh, harass wave has been cleared out as well reasonably easily. Next harass wave has spawned now and is going to try and attack and now we have a bunch of widow mines over here and that might be a bit of an issue but Nova uses a very nice airstrike over here and that airstrike ends up wiping out this harass wave. Now the one thing to note is that Nova is, just remember that Nova is a non-mastery commander so she doesn't even have one point into the Griffin airstrike cost reduction mastery. I think I said that right. So. Each one of these airstrikes are really, really expensive for Nova, so she has to be really careful with how she uses them because she has to be as she has to play as efficiently as possible with them. Now she uses her tactical airlift to try and get into position here. A bunch of spire mines on the top line as well, and these siege tanks are going to be ready with a railgun turret to draw some of the aggro from these units here. Because this attack wave is going to be coming up, and that is actually reasonably okay over here. These spire mines are going to go and aggro through here. Reasonably effective use of the the assimilation aura as well now that these spire mines were aggroing some of these units and now Kerrigan is moving back to somewhere else and now Kerrigan has actually added these macro hatcheries over here so this queen is actually not going to be doing very much we have a bunch of mutalisk upgrades as well so hydralisk upgrade there is a frenzy upgrade that has been queued up for Kerrigan and we have the rapid regeneration and the vicious glaive upgrade that has been and another flyer attacks upgrade that have been queued up here for Kerrigan and that is interesting. We have an overseer that is still sitting on this side. And that has moved over here. And now we have a bunch of hydralisks. And there is no Omega Worm yet, so Kerrigan has to move these hydralisks manually all the way through. Two creep tumors over here. Again, no no creep spread as well. So Kerrigan is not really getting any value from her malignant creep, I believe. That's what the thing is called. Nova is basically clearing out over here. But I'm interested in seeing. This is rock slapping champions, and we're gonna watch what Kerrigan is doing. And Kerrigan sends her hydralisks to just get completely wrecked by the siege tanks and the secret missiles on the enemy camp here. Now Kerrigan decides like, you are not going to kill my hydralisks like this. I am going to jump in and I am going to show you what's what. And, comes in, and she ends up targeting the siege tanks, cleans out those siege tanks now and there's one bunker there. And the bunker is going to stand no chance against Kerrigan's wrath, against Kerrigan's fury. But Kerrigan is not done yet. She wants to take out this raven because this raven was responsible for the death of several hydralisks. But that is also not the end of it, she is now going to jump in and now another secret missile onto Kerrigan. Kerrigan jumps in towards the secret missile. Secret missile ends up picking off Kerrigan with the help of a bunch of Goliaths and a bunch of cloaked banshees. Now Kerrigan's hydralisks are on this side and they are waiting for their queen to come up. And there are a bunch of uh, there are a bunch of SCVs here that are going to try and repair some of the buildings that were damaged in that small skirmish. And Nova is over here, left to fend for herself. She has no help from her ally right now, and she has to deal with these siege tanks, and lots of siege tanks all by herself. Garrigan decides, I'm gonna go and help you now. I'm gonna send a bunch of Hydralisks on here to try and assist in this. These Hydralisks are going to be attacking, and now there is a Griffin Airstrike over here to end up deleting these siege tanks. But 
This is only a small part of the harass that is coming up. Kerrigan has respawned, and now Nova has to try and deal with the side completely by herself again. Siege tanks are running out of spire mines, which is somewhat unfortunate because she kind of needs the, she needs these spire mines to end up clearing out these attack waves. Nova jumps in now, and again there is another attack wave over here, and Nova it has to do a small retreat back into the siege into the spire tank line. But there is also a little bit of detection. Now Kerrigan has jumped in, uses an assimilation aura and no assimilation aura, sorry, uses an immobilization wave and does end up taking out all these banshees. I think now this is basically the bonus objective complete for Kerrigan. Kerrigan completely uninterested in aiding her ally and wants to get that bonus experience because the bonus experience is so valuable at the 2000 experience that it provides in the course of. The mission, assuming you complete both bonus objectives, and ends up cleaning up these barracks. And now Kerrigan is going to be moving to clear out the rest of these supply depots, because these supply depots provide a huge threat to the Allied commanders. We now have the next attack wave that is coming up, and I don't know if Kerrigan is going to be available in time. Actually, Kerrigan is not even moving towards her ally; she's just going to sit back at her base and just wait to reach. Is it just for the for the HP regen? I think it is. So her ally has to uh, deal with the attack wave completely by herself, but the thing is this attack wave has just completely ignored Nova's side and Nova's just gonna be sniping out this stuff off and now Kerrigan decides to go and engage with her army of Hydralisk and there is a hybrid dominator over there. Kerrigan jumps into the middle of this attack wave, Kerrigan tries to run away, or tries to run away over here and that is very problematic because there are a bunch of, hydra there are a bunch of hybrids over here and there is a siege tank as well on the back line. Kerrigan's army gets completely shredded and now Kerrigan sitting there in the corner, unable to escape, and the hybrids end up eating her up. And now there are another... Now there are a bunch of mutalisks over here. I think these mutalisks will be okay. I don't think there are very many units here that can target some of these air units. But overall, casualties, two Kerrigans and 30 hydralisks have been gone completely wrecked by that attack wave. And these mutalisks now are going to be sitting back at their base over here. There is one hybrid... I think that had gotten away over here, and Nova appears to have used a Griffin airstrike to teach that hybrid a lesson and show some dominance there. And Kerrigan is going to be waiting in her base again. It appears that Kerrigan is homesick, and now she's added a bunch of Zerglings to the mix here. She needs some tanking units, and the Zerglings are the perfect tanking unit to use so that she does not end up getting wrecked by attack waves and whatnot. But now the third set, is this the third set? One, two, three, this is the fourth set of Harvesting Bots. Um, the fourth set of Harvesting Bots have spawned and this site is not even beginning to get cleared. This entire, this, this camp is basically finished right now, but there is still an area over here, an area over here that needs to be addressed, and Kerrigan is not helping her ally push, she's just gonna be she's just sitting in her base throughout the course of this mission, and letting her non-mastery ally deal with Amon's forces, and now the first harass wave has already spawned, and this is very very bad. Kerrigan realizes that there is a problem that needs to be addressed, and now she's gonna be moving her army towards the enemy camp here to try and escort these she actually wants to escort these bots all the way through, through these enemy camps over here. And that is not a very wise idea. A bunch of Wither Mines over there, but there's an immobilization wave that comes out and ends up stunning these units over here. Kills all the Wither Mines as well, otherwise that would have been just completely catastrophic. There is a secret missile onto these Mutalisks. Dodge back there, and actually nice move out of the secret missile range. But now there is the glorious thump thump of the banshees that are just attacking Kerrigan right now and she has no detection. Secret missile onto these mutalisks over here and that secret missile ends up connecting and ends up wiping out a lot of Kerrigan's army and now these banshees are going to start attacking Kerrigan because she is the only target they can attack and Kerrigan has no detection so far and now these banshees are going to start attacking this harvesting bot with the rest of this attack wave which has a lot of damage output. There are a lot of widow mines and widow mines do end up connecting on some of these mutalisks and end up completely destroying that harvesting bot. That harvesting bot has been blown to smithereens. One mutalisk decides to give a little bit of attitude to Amon's army and ends up getting picked off. Now Kerrigan is joined with the rest of our Hydralisks, again still no detection and that Banshee is just getting so much value over here. Siege Tank does end up getting picked off as well and I think there might even be some Wither Mines over there that were dealing a lot of damage to Kerrigan. Now these Wither Mines are going to start 
borrowing again. And Kerrigan has nothing she can do over here unless she ends up getting some detection, which is being provided very nicely by Nova. And uh, those with the mines have been cleared off. So far, Kerrigan has lost 12 Mulusks, 32 Hydralisks, and 48 Zerglings in the engage. Now she is going to be sitting in her creep. She has finally spread some creep over here. And this is generally why you want to build Minus Worms, because the Minus Worms give you free creep spread. And they make your life so much easier than the amount of macro that is required to sit and just deal with the queens and stuff. And Kerrigan is over here and she will end up picking off that last siege tank. But again, no help for no help for her ally, and her ally will have to go and push through the rest of this mission over here. So Nova has lost, I think, one Nova and one SCV, and I think six Marauders have been cleared out, and that kind of stings, but Nova doesn't really have a choice. She has to push by herself, because Kerrigan is going to move back towards her base. As well as Yumi, yeah, Kerrigan wants to just sit on Creep at the moment, which is okay, I guess. I guess Creep is kind of comfy, but that doesn't help you clear the mission. So yeah, there's just gonna be some bunch of creep spread here. And her ally is just, yeah, I just gotta continue spreading creep right now on various sides of the map, which is interesting as well. Kerrigan, just waiting right now, has her overseers. They have joined the fray now, and they will provide Kerrigan with the much needed detection so she does not end up getting wrecked by banshees. Yeah, there's just an interest in spreading creep. And no real interest in pushing the objective, so Gary so no will have to be a little bit careful. Two secret missiles onto these siege tanks over here. One will be protected by the barrier that the defensive drone provides, and another one will be contacting as well. Another pullback here, this one will be safe because the secret missile will time out. And now Kerrigan is gonna go and I think wants to push the next bonus objective. And yeah, these banshees are still over there, which is kind of funny. But they are not going to end up catching Kerrigan off guard anymore because she now has her detection. And now some of these Hyperlists are getting shelled from the back. Kerrigan jumps into the middle, immobilization wave, and she should be able to clean out this bonus objective without so many problems. There is another plasma blast from the from the hybrid dominator. And the hybrid dominator is gonna get focused down so it doesn't cast any more abilities. And that bonus objective has been completely cleared. And Kerrigan will be able to clean up this. Objective. Over here, Nova has essentially cleared out the entire side, I think, by herself. I think she's cleared out the side as well. There are a few enemy defenders there. She's gonna push up now onto this ramp, try to clear this enemy base. This one is a really easy one to clear. It's really worth clearing because you can put down some spider mines here and end up spawn camping the attack waves. Especially since the attack wave composition is the mech Terran attack composition. And now Kerrigan is moving back onto her creep. Her soft and cushy creep over here. And is she going to engage this attack wave? Nope, she's not going to engage the attack wave. She just wants to move her army together with her army of Hydralisks and whatnot. And now she's going to go and try and attack the side. Widow mines do get picked off over here. Seems to be okay. So far, so good. Very minimal casualties. But this is only the first of several harass waves that are coming up. And now Kerrigan is going to be moving towards the side. And no, she changes her mind. She does not want to go and deal with the harass wave because that harass wave has been picked off by you Nova know, Spire Mines. You can see the effectiveness of these Spire Mines. They're actually really useful. You should be building them if you're dealing with ground compositions because it does mean that you can actually end up carrying a mission like this, even at non mastery points here. So, this attack wave now is getting harassed by. Or these harvesting bots are getting harassed by this attack wave here and. Kerrigan's army decides to pounce onto this side and deal with it, and I think reasonably okay. There are there's just a widow mine over there, it seems to be okay for the most part. Very minimal losses there for Kerrigan, and now there is another attack wave with a bunch of science vessels over here, and you know what is coming up here. Irradiate on these mulesks, and there is no split on it to any of these mulesks, and they are taking so much damage right now. Nova's defensive drone does help out a little bit, but that is a few mulesks that have been picked off. And Kerrigan is not done yet. There is another harasser that's coming up. And Kerrigan wants to pounce. She wants to show Amon that she is ready. She is the Queen of Blades. And now these mules do jump into the middle of the fray. They get irradiated and they are getting attacked by the Goliaths. And there is a lot of damage onto these mules. And there is no split onto these mules. So that is going to be... There we go. A lot of the mules do end up getting dying off to the radiate over there. They do end up getting saved by Nova's defensive drones, which is somewhat fortunate for Kerrigan. But now, 
Kerrigan is just going to continue to rebuild her army. She is sitting at 120 supply out of 200 supply, and still no Omega Worms, by the way. So Kerrigan does not believe in the power of the Omega Worms, and there is just <laughs> these SCVs just rebuilding stuff. This is this is why you should always clear the map. And now Kerrigan's going to try and jump in on this side again. There is a radiate onto these Hydralisks and some focus fire down onto the... These, these Hydralisks actually do end up taking a lot of damage as a result of that engage. And so far Kerrigan has lost 38 Mutalisk and 46 Hydralisks in the meat grinder that is the mech Terran composition. Nova seems to be okay, she's holding her ground reasonably okay. And now Kerrigan's going to try and jump into the side with the Mines try and Burrow but they are not going to be able to do anything here. And Science Vessel does not end up casting an irradiate on Kerrigan's army. Her army is too small and not really worth irradiating anymore. So lots of units have died off. Lots of casualties for Kerrigan. But I think, for the most part, these harvesting bots are all okay. And I think the attack wave was also addressed by Nova herself, completely solo. And that is pretty much all the harvesting bots saved. So, so far, casualties in the course of this game. Two Overseers, 48 Zerglings, 40 Mutalisks, and 51 Hydralisks with two Kerrigans. They have gotten nuked by Amon's army, but that is pretty much all of Stetman's bots saved for the most part, except for the one that ended up getting picked off. And that is GG.